The most powerful sedan in Cadillac's history is a supercharged V8 answer to the German super sedan rivals, the CT5V Blackwing. The last generation of internal combustion only and still available with a manual transmission. The Blackwing name requires a little bit of explanation. So Blackwing used to be an engine, but it's now a trim level. CT5 replaces the CTS. ATS was replaced by the CT4. There is still a V, but it's now what the V Sport used to be, the mid-tier, the true top-tier CTS V replacement is the Blackwing. Are you confused? Maybe a little bit. All you need to know is this is the most badass American sedan ever made and the top-tier Cadillac performance sedan. In terms of the powertrain, we have a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 that makes 668 horsepower and 659 pound-feet of torque. All of that is sent to the rear wheels. The Blackwing is rear-wheel drive only. Standard with a six-speed manual transmission, available 10-speed automatic transmission. The auto will do zero to 60 in 3.4 seconds. The manual, zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds, up to a top speed of over 200 miles an hour. And this thing will pull over one G's in lateral acceleration. It is an absolute performance monster. In terms of exterior styling, this is the Blackwing. So it's the top tier most aggressive trim. Functionally, the front end is wider to accommodate the wheels and tires. So the fender here in the front end is more aggressive and actually wider than the regular CT5 and CT5V. You can see that here. There's a lot of V badges on it and actually not that many Blackwing badges. Prior to this model year, there actually were no Blackwing badges. And for 23, they've added a little Blackwing badge on the rear deck lid underneath the V. Otherwise, it's one of those kind of, if you know, you know, you have to know what to look for. So in that regard, it's a little more subtle. And the fact that it's electric blue, like bright freaking blue, it's not that subtle, but this thing has a supercharged 668 horsepower V8. It doesn't have to be subtle. You get blacked out trim. And one big way to tell the difference between the CT5 and the CT4, they all have that signature Cadillac vertical running light, this blade on the CT5, it cuts through the front bumper, whereas on the CT4, it sits in front. So that's one of the easy things you can look at to tell the difference between the big brother 5V Blackwing and the little brother CT4. One other really big thing I wanna note on the exterior of the CT5V Blackwing are the wheels. They're 19 inch wheels and that makes me happy because that means you have a little bit more sidewall on your tire. They're a reasonable size, less weight. Tires are probably cheaper. If you look at some of the German rivals, sedans in the segment, they come on 21, 22 inch wheels. They're massive. Whereas these 19 inch finished in the satin graphite looks really nice and cool. We've got the blue brake calipers behind, dark blue on this one with carbon ceramic rotors. There are different brake caliper color options. You can get gray, bronze, red, or blue. I think the blue matches really nicely with the electric blue. In terms of wheels, when the Blackwing was launched, Cadillac also said that magnesium wheels would become optional. Up to this point, as far as I know, they still have not become available yet, but that would be the lightest weight package. It's interesting that they decided to go with magnesium wheels for lightweight wheels versus carbon fiber wheels like you find on the C8Z06, but up to this point, I don't see them option quite yet. You can get a carbon fiber aero pack for the 5E Blackwing. This one does not have it, but it gives it a much more aggressive front and rear end. No no dive plane canards like on the CT4V Blackwing, but it looks totally fine. So with that, let's hop inside the Blackwing, talk about the interior, take it for a drive, see what it's like, and talk about the value. <laughs> this thing is so fast. All right, now we're on the road in the car. Let's talk about the interior of the Cadillac CT5V Blackwing. Some of the highlights, we have a 10 inch infotainment screen, which has wireless CarPlay, Android Auto. It's pretty good. Wireless phone charger below. This one has a 16 speaker AKG sound system. That is pretty nice. And as the top tier of black, when we have various carbon fiber, leather, suede trim, full suede headliner, 
These seats are the regular seats. You can get like carbon fiber back seats, but they all still come with heated and cooled and massage. Overall, the interior is nice, but is it as nice as the German rivals? Absolutely not. If you go into a equivalent BMW, an AMG or an Audi, I think the materials are gonna be a touch nicer. It's gonna be more luxurious but that's not the main focus for the Blackwing. That being said, one of my favorite parts of the Blackwing interior is the full 12 inch digital cluster. Really cool info here, it's reconfigurable. I'm currently in track mode, which puts the tachometer across the top. You can go to tour, you can go to sport. A lot of really nice graphics on there and it's very well done in my opinion. Space-wise, this is quite a bit bigger than the CT4V Blackwing as the CT5, right? So interior space in the back, legroom, all that type of stuff is much better. It feels much more open and spacious. A couple other really cool touches that the Blackwing gets. For the manual, we have this 3D printed metal insert on the shift knob, so that is really cool. And then there's some buttons for interfacing how this thing drives. So we have a rev match button. That allows automatic rev matching. So if you turn it off, I'm in fourth gear now, I can do it myself. There's third gear, second gear, or if I turn rev matching on, the gear indicator in the cluster turns yellow and you get automatic rev match downshifts. So fifth gear, right? I'm cruising along in fifth gear. I'm gonna downshift a couple times. <laughs> this thing also has no lift shifts, which is pretty awesome too. Downshift a couple times. There's second gear. And let's go. <laughs> Holy crap. So you just keep your foot planted, clutch in, next gear, and keep going. This thing is so fast. And then to the right, we've got traction control button, which you actually, I don't touch because on the steering wheel, we have the PTM dial. So performance traction management and the higher end GM performance vehicles. You can toggle up through inactive, just means it's totally on. There's a wet setting. There's dry, sport, race one, race two, because this is a track capable V-Series Blackwing, right? I've left it in inactive this week. I did put it in the wet for a little bit of shenanigans, but it's cold. We're on winter tires, so do zeros. But in the dry, if you're on summer compounds, on the track, you would want to dial through PTM and it allows all sorts of different parameters of slip and things like that. And then we have the actual built-in drive modes, which you can toggle through. And it's like the factory configured one. But then there's two that you can customize to your liking. There's my mode, which you toggle through to get to that. But my favorite is V mode. So it's conveniently just on the steering wheel as a button. You can change steering, suspension, engine shift, brake fuel, engine sound, and PTM. And it's like a quick button that you can customize. So what do I have it set to now? I have steering in the medium heavy, suspension in the softest, right? Because we're on the road, not on the track. So I wanted to absorb the bumps and still ride comfortably. And you can just reconfigure it how you see fit to customize your V mode. It's a really cool button. The Z, Z06 has it too. It's the Z button. I think the Corvette regular Stingray also has it. So big fan of that. So overall, in terms of the interior, it's got nice touches, right? Leather suede, carbon fiber, nice tech creature comforts, heated steering wheel. We've got heated, cooled seats, massage seats. But the big takeaway is it's not quite as nice as the Germans. The price does reflect that difference. We'll get to the value later on in the video. I like the digital cluster quite a bit and it has enough. It has enough to satisfy me for a six figure performance vehicle, but it's not like the best of the best. I'm gonna open the window slightly. Exhaust valves are open. <laughs> oh yeah. That's a 6.2 liter supercharged V8, the LT4. You cannot get a Blackwing in all wheel drive. And that's a big difference compared to the German rivals. Audi obviously is always gonna be all wheel drive, but BMW with the M5, Mercedes with the AMG, the E63, they have some sort of all wheel drive and some are like switchable where they can go to rear wheel drive for a drift mode. But the power levels are getting so stupendously high they're almost needing to put all wheel drive into these vehicles. It does give it a more usable envelope, but Cadillac has stuck with just pure rear wheel drive. Is it more fun? Yes, this thing is a tail happy maniac.
in the segment, my two favorite performance sedans now are gonna be this Blackwing and the M5 CS. But they feel totally different in terms of personality, right? The manual is a big difference. I have not driven a 10-speed auto-equipped Blackwing, but the manual, to me, just puts it above everything else in terms of driver engagement and enjoyment. Coupled with the overwhelming wave of torque that this thing puts out, it just, you have a dumb grin on your face the entire time. I've been averaging under 15 MPG this whole week and it's been worth it because it's ridiculous. We have Magnetic Ride 4.0 on the Blackwing, which is fantastic because it means it can handle really well. You can firm up everything if you wanna drive in a more dynamic manner, but then also, if it's softened, it rides over comfortably. The roads around here are terrible, and I've actually been very impressed at how this can handle pretty choppy pavement. It just absorbs it. In my R8, I'm like bouncing up and down, and this, it just goes, right? From that regard, magnetic ride is fantastic. Curb weight from the manual is just over 4,000 pounds, so that's still pretty good too. Weight is something that is really hitting cars in general, right? But this segment, an RS7 is like almost 5,000 pounds. That blows my mind. And the wheels are a big indicator of that, right? The RS7 now comes on 21 inch wheels with 22 inch wheels as the upgrade option. The Blackwing comes on 19 inch wheels. It looks fine to me and it means you get a little more sidewall. Tires are probably cheaper. They don't need to be massive blingy 22 inch wheels. These wheels still fit carbon ceramic brakes behind them. They're a $9,000 option and this one has has the carbon ceramic brakes, but they've been very livable. Even in the cold, when I first leave in the morning, I don't notice any squealing, nothing unpleasant that you may associate with high performance carbon ceramic brakes. Now they are $9,000 and this is a big luxury sedan. Yes, it is track capable. This thing is just so fast, like go to jail fast. I have had to exercise the utmost level of self-control in this vehicle a, to not get in trouble, B, to keep it in a straight line because it's just ridiculous. And it handles well too for something of the size. Now, absolute driving dynamics wise, I think the CT4V Blackwing is a much more appealing package in terms of the size, the nimbleness, the steering. This definitely has a much more heft to it. It's bigger. It makes up for it with just pure power. So I like the 4V Blackwing in that way, but the 5V Blackwing is just another tier up. In terms of driving, I'll take this or the M5 CS. But the M5 CS is almost too extreme. I spent a lot of time in the M5 CS. Took an eight hour drive um, on a road trip and my back was not happy because those carbon buckets are just so extreme. They look cool, they're fun for a little bit, but after two hours, your back is numb. You wanna call your chiropractor and it's just not comfortable. And it rides so ridiculously firm and it's just so compromised because it's pursuing track capability. Whereas the Blackwing, has more of the dual personality. It can do both. The M5 CS is faster, I think, in a straight line because it all will drive. And that thing is, I think, a bit underrated, right? In terms of power, not in terms of prestige or perception. It's underrated in terms of power, but it's also way, way more expensive. So that gets us to talking about the value. Oh, you saw that, right? You just, whoop. <laughs> The Blackwing starts at right around $90,000. Manual is standard. You can option in an automatic transmission. Please order this with a manual transmission because it's a phenomenal manual. This Tremec paired with this clutch, shifter feel, all of it. I love it. It's so good. $90,000 base. That's way cheaper than the competition, the Germans. When you option it up, this one doesn't have the carbon exterior. It's got reasonable options. The carbon ceramics definitely bumped it up. This one is like 1078, so just under $108,000 as option. Most black wings I see are between like the 105 to maybe 120, 130-ish range. Now, if you look at the German rivals, E63 AMG S, RS7, those are 130 to 150. M5 Comp, M5 CS, we're talking 150 to like 180 for maybe a CS. So this starts looking like <laughs> a ridiculous supercharged V8 bargain. Absolutely. What are the downsides? The interior is not as blingy and materials are more mid-level luxury. Um, and that's it because I, <laughs> I want one of these so much, but I can't justify another $100,000 car, another $100,000 rear wheel drive, almost 700 horsepower car. Oh, man. So I think value-wise, Blackwing brings the best value in the segment, without a doubt. You get the tech creature comforts, you have the performance, the capability. I think this has the best fun factor, has the best driving dynamics, the manual, and 
the supercharged V8 noise. <laughs> what? And that's on winter tires and the cold. Man, what a machine. And it's the last of an era. What a way to go out. I think they may do like a mid-cycle refresh, maybe a couple special editions or something. But generation-wise, I think this is the last iteration of an internal combustion V. Definitely probably the end of the manual. Cadillac is very heavily moving into the EV space now with the upcoming flagship Celestic. You've got the Lyric now. And I'm sure Escalade will go electrified. But imagine an Escalade V, a CT5V Blackwing, and a C8 Z06. That would be the ultimate internal combustion V8 GM lineup. Like, what a set of cars. Like, wow. I know I'm slightly late to the game to drive this thing, but... I now understand why everybody loves the CT5e Blackwing so much. This thing is just a phenomenal combination of the best ingredients. One of the most powerful and ridiculous engines you can buy, that supercharged 6.2 V8, just a mountain of torque, a fantastic manual transmission, great chassis setup, it rides well, I like the way it looks, it sounds angry all the time. <laughs> I want one and that's the highest endorsement I can give something hope you guys enjoyed this review of the CT5V Blackwig I have absolutely loved driving this thing it is so much fun so much fun thanks for watching